Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to make an underwater scene in Blender Eevee. Let's get started. First things first, we need a reference image to model a fish. We'll also use this as image texture. Search for PNG fish on Google. Download the image from the Vecteezy website. Open the image in the paint and lower the image size. Export the image as a PNG file. Open a new Blender file. Select all default objects in the scene and delete them. Go to the Add menu and import the image as a reference. Press Alt-R to clear the rotation. Press Numpad 1 to switch to the top view. Go to the Image Properties tab. Enable the opacity and lower the value. Uncheck the perspective option. So we can only display the image in the orthographic view. Go to the outliner editor and make the image unselectable. So we won't be able to select the image by mistake. All right, let's start modeling the fish. Add a plane. Press Alt Z to switch to X-ray mode. Hit the tab key to switch to edit mode. S key to scale down and G key to move. Press Ctrl R to add two vertical loop cuts. Move the vertices to align with the reference image. Hit the A key to select all vertices and hit the E key to extrude. Press Ctrl R to add a loop cut. Scale down the tail and fins of the fish. Go to the Modifier tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Set the Subdivision Level to 2. Switch back to Object Mode. Right-click and make Shade Smooth. Rename the plane as Fish in the Outliner Editor. All right, let's add Material and Texture. Go to the Shading Workspace. Click the New button to add Material. Add an Image Texture. Plug the texture into the shader. Open the fish image we downloaded earlier. We need to match the image to the model. Go to the UV editing workspace. Switch to the top view and hit the A key to select all vertices. Go to the UV menu and project from view. Switch to the material preview mode. 
Select all vertices in the UV editor and hit the S key to match the UV map to the image. We can manipulate the UV map to have a more precise texture on the model. Lower the roughness value to have a reflective surface. All right, it's time to animate the fish. Switch back to Layout Workspace. Apply the Subdivision Surface Modifier. Rotate the fish 90 degrees on the X-axis. Press Ctrl-A to apply the Rotation Transform. Move the fish up on the Z-axis and back on the X-axis. Hit the I key and add a location keyframe. Go to frame 250. Move the fish forward and add another keyframe. On the timeline editor, hit the T key and set the interpolation type to linear. We're going to add a displacement modifier to have natural fish movement in the sea. Add a new texture, switch the global coordinate system, and switch the Y direction. Set the strength value to 4. Go to the Texture Properties tab and switch the texture type to Clouds. Set the size value to 10 and the Nabla value to 0.1. Let's play the animation. There we go. Press Shift D and duplicate the fish in different sizes and locations. Delete the keyframes for the duplicated fishes. Select all duplicated fishes and select the original fish last. Press Ctrl P and set the fish parent to other fishes. That's it. All right, let's create the sea floor. Add a plane. Scale the plane 100 times. Switch to Edit Mode. Right-click and subdivide the plane 70 times. Go back to Object Mode. Add a Displacement Modifier. Add a new texture. Go to the Texture Properties tab and set the texture type to Clouds. Go back to the Modifier tab and lower the Strength value to 0.05. Right-click and make Shade Smooth. Go to the Shading Workspace, add a new material. I will use a Diffuse Map and a Normal Map for the seafloor. Add an Image Texture. Open the Diffuse Map. Press Ctrl-T to add Texture Coordinates and Mapping Nodes automatically. Set the X, Y, and Z scale values to 10. Drop a Hue Saturation Value node between the Image Texture and Shader nodes. Set the Saturation Value to 1.5. Add another Image Texture. Open the Normal Map. Switch the Color Space to Non-Color. Add a Normal Map Vector and plug the nodes correctly. All right, let's add some rocks to the scene. Go to the Polyheaven website and download the Coast Rock 5. 
Go back to Blender and append the rock. Scale up the rock. Move and rotate the rock so that it sits on the sea floor. Duplicate two more rocks and give them different sizes. Place them randomly in the scene. We will adjust them according to the camera view later on. Let's add some sea plants to the scene. First, search for sea plants in PNG format and download them. Go back to Blender. Ensure that the images as plane add-on is enabled. Add the image as a plane to the scene. Let's animate the sea plant using the wave modifier. Switch to edit mode. Scale up the plane. Right click and subdivide the plane 10 times. Select these vertices. Go to the object data properties tab and assign the vertices to the vertex group. Go back to object mode and add the wave modifier. Play the animation. Select the vertex group we have just created. Disable the x-axis motion. Set the wave height to 0.3 and the width to 1. Open up the time panel and lower the wave speed. That's it. Right-click to make shade smooth. Rotate the plane and duplicate it a couple of times. In the same way, import another sea plant image as a plane. Select the plane, then select the first plane. Press Ctrl L and copy the modifier. That's it. Duplicate and place it in the scene. Select all sea plants. Hit the M key to create a new collection. Move them into the new collection. All right, it's time to get rendered. Switch to render preview mode. Go to the render properties tab and switch to render engine to EV so we can get a faster render. Set the render sample value to 64. Enable the ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Click the World Properties tab and choose an image texture. Open a Blue Sky HDRI image. Set the World Strength value to 20. Switch the Timeline Editor to the Shader Editor. Switch the Shader Type to World. As you know, underwater is a dense environment. So, we need to add a Volume Shader. Add a Principled Volume Shader. Plug it into the volume node of the world output. Select Aqua Color. Lower the volume density. Set the volume density to 0.06. That's it. All right. Let's add a spotlight for volumetric lighting. Click the lamp icon and set the spot power to 50,000 watts. Set the diffuse factor to 3 and the volume factor to 2. So, we can have a stronger volumetric effect.
Set the radius value to 0.1 to have a smoother shadow. Increase the spot size to 85 degrees. Select a yellowish color for sunlight. Go to the Render Properties tab, scroll down to the Volumetrics panel, and set the tile size to 2 pixels. So we can have a smoother volumetric effect. Scroll down to the Color Management panel and switch from Filmic to Standard and Very High Contrast. It looks better now. Let's create shadow caustics on the sea floor. We're going to use light textures for caustics. You can watch my tutorial on how to use Gobos light textures in Blender. In this video, I introduced an animated light texture collection. You can buy this collection on the Gumroad website from the link in the video description. It's easy to make shadow caustics in cycles. In Eevee, we need to place an animated gobo in front of the spotlight. Import the animated caustic texture as a plane into Blender. Place the plane in front of the light source. Hit the S key to scale up so that prevents the light from reflecting on the sea floor. Switch to Shader Type to Object. Select the Image Texture and press Ctrl T to add Texture Coordinates nodes. Disconnect the Alpha node. Plug the Color node into the Alpha node. Add an Invert Color node. Add a Color Ramp. Select the white color stop and drag it to the left side. Set the position to 0.01. Play the animation. That's it. Select the plane, go to the Material Properties tab, and enable the backface culling, so we can hide the backside of the plane in the render result. All right, let's add a camera. Press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to align the camera to view. Go to the Camera Properties tab and lower the focal length value to have a wider perspective. Hit the N key to open the right panel. Click the View tab and lock the camera to view. So, we can adjust the camera view by rotating and zooming the scene. Don't forget to disable the lock the camera option after adjusting the camera perspective. Now let's place the object according to the camera's perspective. we can add hue saturation and value node for the rocks and increase the value. We can also add a translucent shader to make semi-transparent the sea plants. It's time to get rendered. Go to the Output Properties tab and set the resolution value to 1080 pixels. Choose the folder you want to save your render. Switch the file format to MPEG and the container type to MPEG4. Go to the Render menu and Render Animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.